I'm coming in loud and clear. Might hear me on the radio. Breaker, breaker, one nine. Anybody got their ears on? Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. Tonight we'll be taking a look at this Retrievus RT52. This is a nice one, man. This is a five watt um, dual band. 138 to 174 and 400 to 470 so broad range there and it's nice it's also DMR so let's go ahead and open this thing up and check it out so the RT52 digital DMR and analog UHF VHF two-way radio and that's a hefty manual so there's gonna be a lot of reading involved in this one All right. and it uh, looks like we got our programming cable here nice to include that and let's see what else we got here. So here's our main unit, and that is Stout, the RT-52. Okay. Nice. And over here we got ourselves a charging pad. It looks like we got ourselves a hook on the back here. Oh, that's nice. Ah, oh, so nice. <laughs> so nice. It slides in. It's not... Uh, it's not the screw-in type. Those things can be tough to install. <laughs> we have our antenna. Sometimes it's the little things, you know, folks? <laughs> nice antenna. And then we got our charging cable here. Oops. Let me go ahead and undo that. We'll plug that into the wall here in a second. And I just dropped on the floor the last little piece here this which is our little wrist cord here I like to use these because I am kind of a fumbler when it comes to stuff if I can get that in there there we go if I can keep it in there there we go I'd have fat fingers you know perfect cool well, let's go ahead. I'm going to uh, plug it in. We'll charge it up some and we will check it out because it's a pretty sophisticated radio. I won't show you how to do programming, but I would imagine you use Chirp to program in the channels that you want. But it's great. You could use it as a scanner. You could use it as a uh, ham radio, obviously. A dual band ham radio. You could program uh, pretty much anything. You use it for law enforcement, for school, stuff like that. So this is a this is a pretty high-end one. A lot of the ones I reviewed from Retrievus... Um, or, you know, just GMRS or just like business band radios, radios that you want to use out on the town uh, as a security or police or whatever. This one being uh, more ham, more ham orientated, I would say. Reminds me of um, well, a long time ago. I think I did an art, the uh, HD1. No, which one was that? I did a DMR for Retrievers years ago, and it was a great radio. This kind of reminds me of it with the screen and everything. Well, let me go ahead, we'll charge it up, and we'll see what we can find. Nice full-color screen. It's incredible, isn't it? Look at this. GPS activated, uh, battery state of charge, and we've got our dual bands. And that interesting way of uh, digital mode versus analog mode. I like that. And I think, gosh, for a second there, I thought maybe that might have been backlit. I haven't read the manual yet, but I, I want to go through just some of the features and functions with it real easily. Here, of course, we have our... Uh, finger in there there we go there's our uh, if you want to use a wireless mic and uh, speaker and it's also our programming port so it uses that standard setup oops apparently I've pressed a button there I shouldn't have channel change up here on top you can see it rolling through some of the stations right there I'm not sure what she's programmed for out of the factory but you can see it rolling and we have a lot of stuff going on in, the, uh, in there but there's our volume on off so I'll go ahead and shut it back off. We'll turn it back on. We'll go through some of the... I, like I said, I haven't gone through the menu yet, so there's a lot to learn on this. Contacts, so you can program in contacts. Um, scan. If I wanted to hit scan here. Oops. Yeah, I'm totally losing this. Messages, call logs, setup. Let's go into that. Radio setup, radio info. Let's see what that is. Radio ID. Cool. Radio config, RX frequency, TX, channel name, color code, slots, lots of stuff here when we're going to program in our, our, um, you know, our, our frequencies. I'm going to back out of that zone so I can pick my zone. Oops, went too far out of that. 
Zone 1, Zone 2. We're going to leave that where it is. Scan. Let's see what it says. On, scan list. So you can say, oh, I want to just scan, you know, these 10 frequencies. Right? Very cool. Very cool. So it's interesting to me is that um, when I had uh, the first DMR radio that I got from Retrievis, um, I, I I loved that radio and I found it to be way too hard for me to figure out how to use all the features and functions. And at that point, I hadn't discovered Chirp. And you can program these, and if I'm going to put this on the stand here. You know, this manual, which is, I mean, real thick. <laughs> It's going to tell you how to program in channels, and I was able to program stuff, and then if it was an analog, I was able to program that. Um, and then eventually I was able to program uh, DMR channels in there and all the rest. But, you know, it's not easy. Even with a good keypad and a great color menu, it still can be a bit confusing for people of uh, my generation, let's put it that way. Younger crowd, they, they're more tech savvy. they got no problem with this sort of stuff. So I was having problems with it, and um, and now... You know, having downloaded Chirp software and just being able to update these things with a simple file, and you can have like every station on the East Coast. When it comes to DMR stuff, you can you know, literally talk all over the place with this stuff. It's really cool, and so that kind of made it a whole lot more fun for me to use. But as you can see, you can do text messaging here. You got inbox and outbox. You can record. It looks like call record. <laughs> oh, call records. Okay, I was like, wow, we just have onboard, you know, SIM card or not SIM card, but. Uh, mini SD card or something like that. All right. Very, very well done manual, by the way. I mean, look at all this for each, for each thing and it's sub for each setting and it's subsetting. It gives you an idea of exactly what's going on. You can have a picture, you can have a custom boot screen picture. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. This thing is really in depth. So, and then we talk, you know, a little bit less about, Overview, how to do single calling, how to do group calls, um, you know, how to save contacts. And what was cool is you can get a downloadable list for these that literally everybody's ham license goes right into it. So when you make a contact, like information comes up on that. Really neat stuff, man. So this will be something I'll be playing with. And I'll make some follow-up videos to this, obviously, as I get it programmed and as I get it figured out and, uh, and get into it. But uh, I just wanted to share this whole thing with you. I mean, there's a lot going on here. Let's see how many pages this is here. 56 pages of, of content, all in English, and all well-written English, too. Um, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty in-depth. A lot of warnings, too, about FCC rules. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, so... A nice radio from Atrevis. This is, uh, this is a Kenwood killer, I would call it. Uh, Retrievus actually, you know, and this is interesting, and I don't want to get too much into my life outside of this YouTube channel, but um, I work for a company that has a lot of radios, and a lot of the Retrievus radios, a lot of the business band radios get repurposed. We, we use those, and um, we have Kenwood and Motorola radios as well. And what we're finding is for about a quarter of the price of a Kenwood or a Motorola the Retrievus radio just does the same thing uh, just as good for, you know, like I said, a quarter of the price. I think when it comes to ham radios, I'm a little less skilled. As uh, as some of you know, my license has expired and it's been a while since I've played with this stuff other than on the listening side of things. So technology like DMR is mystifying and new to us old timers. But what I realized is that it's probably the same is going to hold true, that this radio is probably a fraction of what a Yesu would cost with similar features or a Motorola or a Kenwood or whatever, you know, big brands that we think of from the, from the heyday of ham. And, uh, and they're just doing a good job. We've got the Baofangs and, and those kind of radios as well, which are kind of considered to be a little bit lesser quality, perhaps. Not bad quality, but lesser. And then we've got these, and I really feel like these are, are you know, like the equivalent of president radios are being Cobra killers. I think Retrievis has really come a long way. And what they are doing now is moving more firmly into the solid hobby ham side of things. And I wish them the best of luck. I hope I can continue to work with them. And I hope that sometime over the winter, I'll finally have a chance to take my ham license test again and get back on the road so I can, I can transmit instead of just playing with these things and listening and, 
and getting to know them without ever being able to make those contacts. CB is fun. GMRS is fun. I do have a GMRS license. FRS is fun. Uh, and I love listening. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love shortwave as well. But uh, being able to transmit on this, being able to talk to somebody on the other side of the country and have it sound crystal clear using those DMR modes and, and hopping is a pretty cool thing to do. And so uh, I hope to be able to play with that shortly. And there'll be a part two on this. Once I get it all figured out, I'll show you some of the finer features and functions. But it'll I'm not going to lie. It's probably going to be a month or two before I get around to doing that. There's a lot going on. <sighs> There's a lot going on behind the scenes here at Farpoint, um, not related to the channel and nothing bad, just a lot, just a lot going on. I've got some family members that aren't well. And so a lot of the videos that you're watching were actually filmed some time ago. A lot of the videos like this, I'm doing my best to uh, get these products out and available for people to see. And, uh, and I just don't have the time to play with them once I get done making these really cool reviews. But hopefully, hopefully after the beginning of a new year, things will get somewhat more back to normal. Until next time, my friends, take care.